discover the NAB Show, the ultimate destination for media, entertainment and technology professionals. Explore innovation and connect with industry leaders right here in Las Vegas. We're here at day two of the NAB show in Las Vegas and I'm really pleased to introduce Mathieu from Whitby. How are you? How are you going? Yes, doing good. How are you? Great, thank you. Okay, so we've got some questions we'd love to ask you a little bit about video services and as they're becoming more complex, how are providers shifting from reactive to proactive monitoring? Um, something we've been advocating for, uh, for a while but um, the, a lot of uh, our customers uh, rely on our technology to get a source of truth of uh, how the services are behaving in the field without having to rely uh, on customer voice. Uh, and a lot of people would uh, watch TV and then call customer support uh, when they when they see something not working but today it's not really the case like when you're watching Netflix or Amazon Prime there's not a customer support line that you can call to report an issue and so it's no longer enough to wait for your customer voice to come back to you you have to take uh, action and measure the quality of experience that you're delivering in the field uh, yourself and that's what we are doing uh, with our Witbox, uh, which is another user that it behaves like a user uh, and it's going to proactively test any kind of digital service, any kind of video service, uh, in order to report on its availability, its performance and, the performance and quality. So everyone's talking about more data, Matthew, but how do or what do operators really need from their quality assurance tools today? 100%. And you're talking to somebody who uh, we run a, a robot our, our products are robot and so we're used to generating a crazy amount of data uh, and sometimes we look at stats from our customers and it's like you the robots have watched 2.6 million hours of, of videos in the last month or something so definitely a struggle uh, a lot of people focus on getting more data we think it's important to refine that data to provide uh, meaningful insightful uh, information that people can actually act upon uh, and so we have we spent a lot of time refining uh, the way that we do QA, the way that we do monitoring uh, in order to provide our customers, of course, a lot of data, but in a refined way that's going to help them understand how their services are behaving from aggregated data into, at the end, a video of the test that was recorded by the robot that is going to allow them to see uh, what happened, why the robot decided it was an error, and then they can share that video across teams to say uh, between QA, operations, engineers, to kind of share the same referential of test, uh, and because they share the same reference, they can talk to each other, understand each other, and again, take action. That's unbelievable. Now, there's a lot of talk about AI and automation in mm -hmm. QA. How do you see their roles evolving? Yes, AI has been a very a buzzword for uh, for the last few few yeah. months. Um, it's it's funny. We've been doing AI and, and machine learning at Whitby for uh, for a long time. The our VQ video quality algorithm, uh, the, v, the Whitby MOS, uh, is actually one of the very first uh, AI algorithm that we uh, that we started working on back in 2003. Uh, so we have a lot of uh, expertise and experience uh, in that field. Uh, today, uh, our, uh, our product rely a lot on AI to make uh, the scripting, how to teach the robot to behave like a user, as easy as possible, uh, which is a challenge because the robot behaves like a black box, it sees what's on the screen, it reacts to uh, images that show up on the screen, has to read text, uh, and so on. And so there's a lot of AI that goes into these boxes uh, in order to make them as smart as possible so that the overhead from, for, for people to, to take care of the scripting part is as low as possible. Now, I want to ask you a little bit about how global operators can ensure consistent service when devices and networks vary so much region by region. Yeah, good point. If you look at, uh, again, the content uh, video app, how do they make sure that when operating from the US, uh, it's working in Europe, it's working in Africa, in Asia. Well, they have two options. They can put a bunch of engineers in the plane and fly them out and, uh, and then like buy a subscription and try out the service for a week or two weeks and figure out how it works. Uh, or they can send our product, uh, which is going to be uh, deployed in the field in territory where they have other users. And again, our products are going to be like, uh, like end users 
uh, using the video service, measuring how it behaves uh, in time, uh, and they can save on costs, on travel costs for their engineers, we can then, which can then be used to actually do work uh, and improve the quality of services they deliver. So we help a lot of, uh, of our customers with, uh, with this problem, uh, how do their services behave uh, in territory, uh, and it's a, it's a good use case of our product. There's been a lot of talk at NAB at the various stands about collaboration, about partnership, and you've had a very exciting collaboration with TAG when it comes to end-to-end -end video monitoring. So tell us a bit more about why and what this does. Happily. Um, Obviously, I'm very biased, I love our products. Uh, I think we have a very uh, unique take on how to do monitoring. Um, and we are, we became, after many years of R&D, uh, expert in on-screen monitoring. We look at what after the screen of, of real people devices and we measure the experience of any kind of video service on these devices. Uh, TAG had the same approach, uh, but for a different part of the problem, a different part of the equation, which is in-network, which is equally important. You need to know also how your video streams are behaving in-network uh, if you want to make sure uh, that it gets to the end. And sometimes we say garbage in, garbage out. If, if the streams are not working in-network, there's a good chance that uh, it doesn't work on the device as well. Uh, and we have several customers who are using TAG and WIDB uh, and we wanted to see if there was a way for us to work together, combine our forces, uh, in order to offer true end-to-end uh, -end monitoring from the network to the screen uh, with companies that uh, I think we think alike, they're not far, they're just over there. Uh, we have a very strong product, uh, technical um, DNA. Uh, we are about the same size, We apparently we work uh, kind of the same uh, way, so it's been a it's been a fruitful collaboration so far. We've enjoyed uh, working together. The, the Super Bowl, uh, we did a study for the Super Bowl uh, month, two months ago now, uh, around um, measuring the quality uh, and the availability of the big game on different type of devices, from OTT devices, set top box, and so on. Uh, and one thing that the collaboration with TAG enabled us to do was a latency measurement at scale. Uh, and so we were able to measure precisely the, the latency, the streaming latency across the different devices. And so we're happy to see that uh, OTT devices from 2B, uh, the 2B app on OTT devices were uh, streaming the big game first. So it was an interesting uh, finding. So more collaboration to come, you think? I think, uh, yeah, it's been a few uh, months that we've been working on this with them. Uh, and so as we are, um, talking to our customers about this and, and brainstorming around the product. I'm sure there'll be other use cases that we'll find and I think it's, yeah, I think it's the beginning of a, a very interesting collaboration. Mathieu, as always, it's great to see you and good luck Likewise. with the rest of the show. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye.